welcome back to my channel my name is kelsey and i'm here today to do a different kind of video oh hi thanks for checking in i'm still a piece of garbage recently i just read the final revival of opal and nev by donnie walton and i need to talk about this so this book comes out march 30th published by 37 inc and the hardcover comes out to 368 pages of pure gold so this book follows a woman named opal who in the 1970s afro punk rock scene in new york gets a chance to team up with this british musician named nev they work together to create some pretty influential music this book is also written through the lens of a reporter in modern time i think it's 2016 and this reporter has a special connection to the woman named opal and wants to write this oral history of their musical career if you know me i love oral history books about like rock and roll. One of my absolute favorites and the reason that I enjoy this format in nonfiction books. This is Please Kill Me, The Uncensored Oral History of Punk Music. And it was written by Legs McNeil. He was a pretty influential reporter in the punk scene at the time that this was written. And this was also co-written by Gillian McCain, who is a poet reporter from Canada. So in this book, we see an oral history of the punk music scene in general. So it follows influential stars like Iggy Pop and Joey Ramone that kind of thing and their perspective on what was happening in the twilight years of New York so definitely one of my favorite books I haven't read it in a while but it certainly influenced this genre of nonfiction. another one of my faves is Babylon's Burning and this tells the oral history of the punk scene and how it transcended into the grunge rock scene so essentially following the Sex Pistols up until Nirvana with Kurt Cobain and this is written by Clinton Helen these two were pretty influential reads for me in high school definitely got me more into punk and grunge and I just love following the voices and accounts of bands and people that I really not looked up to but really enjoyed their music. So I had always thought that this type of writing format and history would follow only in nonfiction. I mean you would want to read these stories from the words of people who were there at the time. So I'll put this one down because it's a bit heavy. <laughs> So because I really enjoyed this format, I always wanted to pick up books like this. I had never seen this done in fiction until 2019 when my favorite book of that year and possibly of all time came out. This is Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. So this is an oral fictional account of a band called The Six and how they intertwine themselves with this singer songwriter artist named Daisy Jones. And the book follows their life written in oral history like those that you see here and how they had gotten together and created these really influential albums and how they were the most talked about people of their time and how their lives kind of intertwined and how they reflect back on their time now that they are older and outside of what they were experiencing. So this book has spoken to me on so many levels. I enjoyed everything about this book. I absolutely adored the characters. Karen, Daisy, and Camilla are the female characters within this book and they were all so beautiful and so smart and so confident within themselves and who they were. They each represented an aspect of womanhood and I really appreciated how Taylor Jenkins Reid utilized that to tell the story and part of why I am bringing this up and creating this type of video is because I think Taylor Jenkins Reid did a fantastic job to make me believe like I was reading about an actual band from the 1970s. I found myself like really aching to listen to their music and wanting to google them and look up pictures of them but of course I couldn't do that because they didn't exist and I think that that is like just the coolest thing and it just shows the breadth of Taylor Jenkins Reid's talent in creating this fictionalized realness. The ability to make her characters feel real was everything that I love. Obviously in these types of books the characters are real. I know who they are and I already know that I like them and Taylor Jenkins Reid made me like these fake people and made me want to know much more about these people that don't exist. Of course the plot in the book had everything that I love. It has like lovers who cannot be together, the music scene of the 1970s and how that affected women and how the women in this novel took charge of their own destiny. I was hooked from the beginning, absolutely could not put this book down. I was like tearing up over the end of the novel Truly, I was just super invested in this book and this book made me realize or rather I think cemented the fact that I love the format of oral history and how it is utilized to tell a story from multiple points of view that are all related and all have a specific role and 
part in the making of their careers and of their story and of their lives and how they affect each other later on. Then I read the final revival of Opal and Neb and I knew that this is a format that I will love. This story is so good, oh my god. And like the title of this video says, I think if you really enjoy Daisy Jones and the Six, you will enjoy the final revival of Opal and Nev. So because I love that book, I think this comes as a strong recommendation that you need to read this book just on the basis that you like Daisy Jones and the Six. The oral history format in this book was extremely well done and obviously works well to emulate the non-fiction narrative that it's trying to be. Walton's writing really adds to this novel because I felt as though her characters were real also and they were about to like leap off the page. Not to mention how their voices and personalities really match the situations and people that they are and will be in both timelines. Much like with Daisy Jones and the Six, these characters, because they felt so real, I wanted to Google the photos that were being mentioned and the concerts that were being spoken of. And I wanted to listen to the albums that were being created in this novel. It was excellently done. I loved how we went through Opal and Nev's careers, much like how we went through Sunny, who is the main narrator of the novel, the journalist, how we went through their lives and how they all intersected with one another. And I thought that it was really well done. And one of my critiques actually of Daisy Jones and the Six is that although I really enjoyed enjoyed how this book ended and how it tied together. I think it is more well done in the final revival of Opal and Nev. I love both situations but I think it's just better done in this book. However something that I think Walton does much better than Daisy Jones and the Six is the intersectionality that comes within this book. The novel, much like Daisy Jones and the Six, discusses sexism in the industry as well as drug addiction but I think what it does better is this discussion surrounding classism and racism that I don't think Daisy Jones and the Six touches upon because it's very heteronormative and white. Walton writing a woman of color as a woman of color adds this level needed when we look at rock history. So if we look at the books that I've shown, if you look at the cover, obviously all of these musicians are white. Most of the musicians at the time in the scene were white. If we look at this cover, we obviously have Johnny Rotten from the Sex Pistols, a white man, Kurt Cobain, Nirvana, a white man, and Daisy Jones and the Six, which does follow a very white-centric narrative. But the final revival of Opal pits a woman of color with a white British man and sees how their situations and the way they were treated and the way that they created their art is extremely different. All this to say and this whole video to say that I think you really need to pick up the final revival of Opal and Nev when it comes out. I think if you love the 60s, 70s rock scene, if you love this oral history format, you absolutely need to pick it up. And I can only vouch that as soon as I finished reading the arc of it, I pre-ordered it from Indigo that day because it's that good. So that's it. This was a pretty short video just to tell you that if you like Daisy Jones and the Six, please pick up the final revival of Opal and when it comes out March 30th. If you've read this book, please let me know down below if you love oral history format books and you have any fiction books that follow along that format, please let me know down below. I'd be super interested to read more from that. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell. Obviously, it makes me feel really good and I don't know how to end these things. Pre-order this book, buy this book when it comes out. I guess I will see you next time. Bye!